Can the Sooners get to the Final Four? Well, they're halfway there. Two wins down, two to go, but Thursday will not be a picnic because they're going to be playing the Texas A&M team that has athletes and can rebound, and a team that does not quit. As Northern Iowa found out the hard way on Sunday. We'll talk more about that in a second. But the Sooners making their 10th Sweet 16 appearance and their second straight appearance in this round, while the Texas A&M Aggies' first appearance in the Sweet 16 since joining the Southeastern Conference a few years ago and just their fourth Sweet 16 appearance ever. A&M's never made it past the round of 16. They're trying to change history while the Sooners trying to keep their season alive, and the two teams will play Thursday in Anaheim, California, for a 6.30 p.m. Oklahoma tip with the winner playing Duke or Oregon in Saturday's West Regional Final. Saturday's winner, of course, moving on to the Final Four next week in Houston. Oklahoma, a two-point favorite, so Vegas, no question, has this being a nail-biter. Of course, Buddy Hill coming off the spectacular game on Sunday. He was big in the second half, scoring 29 of his 36 points in that half, and he was there when his team needed him the most. Sooners know that they will be facing a big challenge on Thursday because A&M's big. I mean, they've got a big backcourt, okay? You talk about Jalen Jones. He's a terrific guard, but also he can play that forward position. He stands 6'7". Um, Daniel House, he's 6'7 as well. And when it looked like Texas A&M's season was over, you know, they were down 12 with 43 seconds to go in Sunday's second-round regional against Northern Iowa. Um, A&M put together a 14-2 run. In amazingly improbable, incredible, still doesn't seem like it happened, but it did. And, and and House scored five of those twelve of those fourteen during that run. He would score eleven more in the overtime period. What looked like was going to be an average to below average game for Daniel House when he had six points late in regulation. He ended up with twenty two points for the game and nearly double digits in rebounds for the game. Ended up being an incredible game, and that's proof to Jordan Woodard, who will have that assignment of Garden Daniel House on Thursday, that House and these Aggies can explode at any time. And again, that's what the Panthers found out the hard way. So Woodard's going to be giving up about, you know, anywhere from six to seven inches, about half a foot of height to Daniel House. The good news for Woodard is that he knows what it's like to play against tough competition. As we found out earlier a couple of times, against Wayne Seldon Jr. of Kansas. You know, terrific guard. Um, good news also for Woodard is that he's got about a uh, six foot five inch wingspan. Okay? So that'll maybe negate part of that height advantage too that House will possess. So Jordan Woodard defensively will have to have the game of his life. We know offensively, you know, he can come through because the last two games, him and Cousins in supporting roles for the Sooners have played well in terms of the scoring department. But let's see how Woodard does on the defensive end. Rebounding will be the main, main thing in this game for the Sooners because the second half against Virginia Commonwealth, after having a good first half on the boards, you know, on the glass in the second half, the Sooners were getting waxed, especially offensive rebounding. That's a big reason why Virginia Commonwealth almost pulled off the upset was because of rebounding. And conversely, in the A&M game against Northern Iowa that same night in Oklahoma City, A&M had a plus-10 rebounding advantage over Northern Iowa. I mean, I mean, the Aggies were, were getting rebounds at will in that game, and you could say that was a huge reason why the Aggies were able to uh, pull off a comeback, um, a comeback for the ages, the greatest comeback in the final minute of an NCAA basketball game, regular season, or tournament. Um, rebounding will always, you know, negate so many things during a game that you aren't doing well. If you aren't shooting great from three-point range, and that night a and wasn't. They didn't shoot a, a real good game from outside the arc, okay? They, they weren't. But when you rebound well, you can get back into a game, and you can win a game. And they've got height. When it's Daniel House, 6'7", you know, Jalen Jones, the guard of Ford, 6'7", and Tyler Davis, the only non-senior on that starting five for the Aggies, 6'10". So for OU, for Ryan Spangler, he, cut, he, you know, he came off a nine-rebound performance, not bad. But you know, both, but both he and Latin, in terms of the paint, were non-existent in that second half against BCU. So the game is going to be won to me, not necessarily by yield this time, but by the front court of Oklahoma, because A&M can dictate a game by the boards, by rebounding. And not that Latin cannot be a factor, but Latin has shown, unfortunately, that 
habit of getting into foul trouble. And if that happens, and it could happen on Thursday, just because of what we've seen lately, then you have to have Dante Buford come in and make a contribution. And the, the pressure really could be on Buford in the event that a call to Min Yang is not available again. Unfortunately, you know, Min Yang, who, who we pray for because of, of the death of his family uh, member, couldn't play this past weekend. Um, he was in Minnesota because of personal reasons. And again, thoughts and prayers go to his family. But he was unavailable for that second round game against BCU. Don't know the status of Thursday. So if he can't go, then that's going to really thin Oklahoma's bench up in the paint. So the Sooners have got to find a way to limit second opportunities for Texas A&M. The second opportunities really help Virginia Commonwealth get back into that game on Sunday, and it erased a double-digit deficit. Matter of fact, VCU had a couple of um, a couple of nice runs in that second half to eventually take leads in that game. The Sooners needed Buddy Heald down the stretch to overcome VCU. Rebounding will be the big, big thing. Spangler and Ladin have to be able to neutralize the A&M paint because, again, that's where A&M really specializes in their game. You know, Billy Candy's done a good job with A&M. I think, though, Oklahoma, the season that they're having, uh, they, they've come too far just for it to end right now. They have. Um, I know that Heald has gotten off the slow starts at times this, this season, including the, the Sunday game against BCU. But I still think that the Sooners defensively will be fine. Okay, A&M doesn't always shoot the ball well either. So I think the Sooners, in a close game, will be able to make their free throws down the stretch. And I think that they will be able to, I'm not saying dominate the boards, but I think that they can make sure that A&M doesn't have a great rebounding game either. By four points, I'm going to say Oklahoma wins and moves on to Saturday and the West Regional Final. But it should be a good game from Anaheim. That's my look at Oklahoma and A&M for the West Regional Semifinal. Boomer Sooner.